Hey guys, welcome to uh, episode three yeah, of guys. three um, about our um, community and how it is important and how we need to press in, even though uh, right now it's hard to do that. Um, I think that it is, things are seem to be opening up in the economy, which is awesome. It's good news. Um, but we still, as a church, um, as a, like a collective body of believers, I think we're still in the process of adapting some of us. We're going to talk about that. Tony, how yes. you doing? Good. Good. Welcome. Do you Thank have your you. coffee? I do. I have iced coffee today. Ooh. Yeah. We should call it iced coffee in Christ yeah. convos. Hey. Yeah. I-C-C-C. Goes with the fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. We, we stepped things up a little bit. We got this nice fancy curtain. We got this nice fancy fire. <laughs> we got this nice fancy GoPro. Wave yeah. to the GoPro, Tony. Hey. <laughs> um, so, if you guys enjoy these videos... Definitely let us know. Um, give us some some questions that you guys may have. Uh, we'd love to wrestle through some problems with you. Um, and uh, hopefully we can bring some value to this conversation. So, Tony, where do you think we should start? We sort of uh, left it open-ended so that people can kind of hear how we're wrestling through some stuff. So Yeah. I think, you know what, let's talk about um, what how COVID has impacted us mm. and then kind of what we learned from that. Mm. I think that'd be good. Yeah, I think COVID definitely impacted me um, in in ways other than how other people may have been impacted. Other people were mainly impacted through finances and through um, just uh, a lack of job security, a lack of like um, knowing where food's coming from, knowing where a lot of day to day things are coming from. And uh, for me, COVID just challenged me to. Um, to just change and to grow up and to see things through uh, a different perspective. Um, and I think that I did change my, my perspective on community mm. for sure. Um, I think it helped me redefine what community was. That was part of like the growing up uh, perspective. I, I think I used to think that like in order for church to happen, we all had to be meeting in person. I definitely think that that like the last two episodes, uh, talk about how important that is and, and why that's, uh, beneficial. But, um, like for almost probably like seven, eight months we weren't meeting, you know, mm. and, uh, it was difficult to, to adapt and to, to do church, um, in that context. And I remember we were doing online services for a long time. Um, just like in front of a curtain, a lot like this one and, uh, just playing guitar and then Josh would come up and, you know, it was, it was new, but mm. like we had to adapt and we, um, we had to adapt how we did community online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. Mm. I, uh, so I was finishing, I was at Liberty when COVID first hit, I was mm. actually starting my spring break. It was coming, it's coming up on a year. Mm. It's literally like a year ago. Wow. Um, and I was finishing up and I had come home for my spring break, brought like two or three works weeks worth of stuff. Mm. And then I remember when, uh, they started shutting places down. Yeah. And, um, I remember watching the news and I saw California was shutting down the state and then I started panicking like, Oh gosh, like yeah, Maryland right. will probably follow. So then we had to go back and Olivia actually, we were engaged at the time. Yeah. She drove up with me and we packed literally within a day. We packed my whole apartment. She cleaned it down while I was finishing up my sermon. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I had to, cause I was preaching the next Sunday. So she cleaned it up and uh, we moved all my stuff back home. Mm. And so the beginning was like Liberty. Then I came home and I was home for about, four months and I was staying with my parents and my uncle. He's, uh, he's got some health issues. And mm. so I had to be super safe. So I was like super isolated. Mm. And then me and Olivia got married and like, I burst back into community because I'm like, I'm not necessarily staying with people who are at risk as much mm. though we were taking safe measures. Yeah. And so it was like, I, I went from watching behind, like watching every Sunday to being there. Yeah, like, that's right. <laughs> serving. it was like, it was like, I did the transition. So I did both sides. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it was a crazy change. Like yeah. the first half was like so isolated, mm. and it was. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, it had some kind of negative effects on me. Mm. But the second half was so refreshing. Like being back in the communities. Like oh yeah, like people. Mm. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are there any verses that come to mind that um, that check the boxes of like what church needs to be and like what community a church needs to provide? Any, any, like, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but any, anything that, uh, you know, it's like, 
Because what mm-hmm. I wrote is the church does not need to check our boxes in order to be complete in God's eyes. It only needs to line up with scripture. Mm. So like what community? I think uh, in the last video we went through Acts 2. Mm-hmm. What else? Acts 2. I mean, I think 1 Corinthians is a great letter because Paul, especially in like chapters 12 through 14, he's talking about spiritual gifts. Everybody's a spiritual gift, right? Mm. Then 13, he's saying what, what binds all the diverse people together is love. Mm. And in chapter 14, he's like, okay, now when you're coming together, this is how I want everything to operate. Yeah. It's not just crazy. Like everybody has their gifts. So everybody just jump up there and compete. Yeah. Um, I think as far as community, I think that's a good picture because you see everybody's gifted. Then you see everybody's called to love. And mm. then you see how we all work together. Yeah. And that's first Corinthians 12 through 14. Mm. Yeah, I think community is essential for personal well-being and health and for the flourishing of society as a whole. Um, I also wrote, you're you're never going to have a healthy society without a healthy community. Um, yeah, and I think that's, you know, that was that's kind of echoing the sentiment of 2020 with all of the um, racial injustice that was yeah. going on in that whole conversation. That's really continued into this year, and I think it's an important conversation. It's super uh, good for, for Christians to wrestle through that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like healthy community comes or healthy society comes when there's healthy community. And I think that like healthy society and culture as a whole is aided by the church. And that's one of the areas that I noticed in 2020, uh, the church really failed, unfortunately, um, Mm -hmm. or at least the churches that I was aware of, um, they failed to kind of step up and provide a, um, uh, help to, to people who are maybe a little bit more vulnerable. Mm. Um, and so a lot of like, yeah, I, I called quite a few churches, um, asking if they were interested in, in partnering with our church and like, Hey, we have like some really great inner city context ministry for you guys to be a part of. Like, when can you come down? They're like, dude, we're closed. Mm. Like our doors are shut. We're just doing like propping up a, a phone on Sunday and like having a teaching and that's it for the mm. church. And I was like, no, mm. um, painful i think that uh i think that people really needed and continue to need the church to step up and so i think that that would be really really awesome for to to just see um christians and and christian leaders step up into into filling um real world needs for people Mm. yeah um culturally and by design we need fellowship Mm -hmm. what are your thoughts um, I think, yeah, obviously. Sorry, I was right. I was, you yeah. know, when you're talking, I was writing down some notes. Mm. Um, you made me think of something, but I, I agree a hundred percent. I think, it, I, I think we need fellowship, but that's one of the first things to go yeah. when something happens like COVID. Yeah. Okay. So it makes sense. Like I understand certain people, were, like people were called to quarantine. Like it was a state mandate. Like mm. it was a country mandate yeah. at one point. So that makes sense. But what's interesting is people didn't just isolate physically they isolated emotionally relationally so they like um people just kind of withdrew to themselves it was kind of like we became um like bears and we just hibernating you know like everybody's just like hey i'll see you when covid's over like Mm. they just pull the cover over themselves and disappear but that's like so necessary for health it's an introvert's playground it really is i heard it described you know what even introverts are getting desperate now like it's like (laughs) COVID made everybody realize, I think, how hungry relationally they are. Yeah. And I heard I heard about some crazy thing called um skin hunger. Mm. It sounds crazy, provocative, but mm. it, what it means is there's a need and a desire to be touched. Mm. Just hugs, nothing inappropriate, just hugs or mm. pats on the back. Mm. And like during isolation that goes. And mm. so you got people who just craving for like touch. Like mm. literally like somebody just to pat them on the back. Mm. Um Especially because, you know, the, the distancing, the mm. social distancing. So even in public, we're like kind of patting each other on the arm, yeah. you know, handshakes. And people are like, like literally craving, like their bodies are like, yo, somebody hug me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I just need a hug. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. No, I, speaking as a hugger, I, I restrain myself a lot because I know it can make people feel uncomfortable. But I love hugging people. And there's a guy who uh, he comes around with his family and. Uh, they live on a boat. Um, Manzano's, if you're watching this, we love you. Hey. Um, but like, he always gives me like this big old bear hug every time I see him, and I just feel so much love. And that was all taken away mm. uh, last year, and and continuing into the, into this year, my heart just goes out to people who who need that physical touch. Um, yeah, we we're 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 people who need to be around other people, mm-hmm. and I think that like I understand that the the coronavirus is a real thing. 
but like it is rough for, mm-hmm. for a lot of people to to have to you know close themselves off um not be social like like extroverts and people who get energy from mm. like yeah like i have some statistics is, is now a good time to go through some yeah. of those so mental health i'm sure like everyone watching this is aware of this but mental health just plummeted as soon mm. as um quarantine started and and uh you know, all of those necessary steps to get to where we, we are today. Um, as soon as all that started, um, so domestic abuse and anger on a national scale skyrocketed. Uh, symptoms of anxiety rose from 6.33% to 50.9%. Depression from 146 to 48.3%. Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, 7% to 538 Psychological distress from 3443 to 38%. Stress from 8.1% to 81.9%, and all were reported in the general population during the COVID-19 pandemic in China, Spain, Italy, Iran, the U.S., Turkey, mm. Nepal, and Denmark. Wow. Some of these were increased due to the frequent exposure of social media slash news concerning COVID-19, mm. and this is coming from pubmed.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov. Um, insane. Yeah. You know, like I, I do believe that um, I don't know what your experience was uh, personally, but my, my experience in the beginning of COVID was mainly this is scary, but like I'm I'm basically OK. You know, there I remember walking into Target one time. The, the shelves were empty. Mm. And I was like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, uh, and like there was no toilet paper. And uh, mm. that was like a little bit weird. But literally, like I think I think it was like the next week or, or two weeks later, we got like our first shipment of of. Uh, donations and it was just tons and tons of toilet paper mm. and i'm like what the heck you know um there was like uh paper towels and uh, clorox wipes like we get some really awesome donations considering mm. everything that is in shortage right now um and it's like totally a blessing from the lord and we're able to bless other people as a result which is just awesome mm. you know yeah. I can, you look like you want to say something you know what yeah uh first of all i want to say how just shout out to the Lord, Lord mm. Jesus. I know you're watching this. You see everything. No, seriously, like, like God is so great. Like he provided so richly in COVID times. I'm serious. Like, you laugh. Sorry. No, but it, you know, it's like, man, we got to give him a shout out because he's providential. Yeah. Like he yeah. li- like, like our church got so many shipments. Like even mm. today, like we're taking things yeah. off uh, the truck and it's like, man, these are mm. things that people need so much like soap detergent mm. like toilet paper um food all that like everything that was like that that there was supposedly a shortage of like we were getting blessed by and god was like providing yeah um and it reminds me oddly enough of the book of ruth mm. because in the book of ruth we read it and we're like okay this love story between ruth and boaz which it is in part but when you really study the book of Ruth, it's like God provides, you know, like Ruth and Naomi were like they were in need of a redeemer. They were in need of food. And it was a in I don't know if you know, but in the beginning, it starts off with like in the time of the judges, mm. uh, there was a famine. And you got to realize the time of the judges was a lawless time. Like mm. the, everybody was doing what they wanted to. They didn't have a king. So imagine you take the president and the government out of the U.S. Yep. And you just got people with whoever's got the most guns. That's kind of how it goes. Yep. Um, and then because of their sin, God sent a famine. And so now they're struggling with a famine. Mm. And throughout that book, it's like God's preserving them. And through Ruth came, obviously, Jesus. So mm. he's like preserving a promise to the world. Yeah. But like that was we read it and we just see a love story. But that was in a time of lawlessness and famine. Mm. And so when I look at COVID, I'm thinking all these blessings that have happened to like to most like a lot of people. Yeah. Not all. Um, but a lot of people, God just showed up in a miraculous way. Um, and it was I think if anything, we realized like how much we need God's provision that the security we thought we had Honestly. wasn't really there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. People, I think people had to give up a lot of areas that they like had security in, you know, like mm-hmm. they had to, like people lost their jobs. People lost uh, access to, you know, entertainment and fun stuff. And then like <laughs> overnight, basically a lot of parents became homeschooled parents and they had mm. to learn how to use, like teachers had to le- learn how to use zoom. Parents had to learn how to use zoom. Uh, corporations had like our, our entire culture has been reformed and re- reshaped as a mm-hmm. result of this pandemic. Yeah. And um, I think that mo- like the majority of churches have also adapted in the same way. But, um, you know, maybe if you're just watching this and you're, you're asking yourself like, how have I, how have I um, adapted 
to COVID and you can't really think of, um, of something, maybe it's just, it would be a good exercise to, to challenge yourself. Like how, how can I adapt to, um, provide community some of the things that we've talked about in the last two episodes? Um, how can I search for those things in my context now and just adapt to this new normal, um, that we're finding ourselves in now? Um, we're, we're praying that things go back to the way that they were before the, mm-hmm. the virus, you know, absolutely. Um, but we also want to be sensitive of people who are just, they're vulnerable, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. What else? Um, you know what? I think there was a, it, it was, I think there was an awareness that community is something you can join, but a lot of times it's something you have to cultivate yourself. Um, because what I found is like there's pockets of Christian, non Christians mm. kind of sitting around waiting for somebody to invite them into something or, oh, yeah. you know, and yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. man, like there's three people sitting around waiting for somebody to invite them some, yeah. to something like, hey, how about you three get together mm. and you plan out how you want to start things? Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of like. I love the, Tony so much. <laughs> he always comes up with the good stuff. I mean, it's, it's by the grace of God, because these are tough lessons for yeah. me. These are all things I yeah. have to learn. So maybe we should just like extend a challenge um, to the people who, who are watching, like uh, to, um, you know, do your best to cultivate community mm. in your own context, whether it's your family or your um, your church or your friends. Uh, maybe like challenge yourself. Um, to surround yourself with a community or to start a community. Like mm. you're saying, invite people in your life, friends and, and cousins and family. And mm. like uh, we, we've established, and I think most people who are watching this agree how important it is. Mm. Now we should, we should be responsible as a church to step into that role and provide this super important thing um, for the people around us. Cause you know, um, Maybe most people are like, uh, I'm kind of busy. I have other things to do. But we've remember we've established that it, it has to happen. You know, it's it's super important um, for the survival of like our mental health and for the the um, continued sustainability of the church. I think it's a uh, really 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 good. Mm. Can, I, can I throw in two things with Please. that? Please. Um, first, I so I personally know three women who have not left their house since COVID hit. Ooh literally a year i know three women off the top of my head i'm sure there's more wow and i think this is a good time for if you are able to get out the house maybe go stand outside the window wave to them talk to them call Mm. on the phone maybe like a group of people adopt somebody Mm. who can't leave the house Mm. and you guys take turns calling that person Mm. because there are people who are literally like and i know one of them she just i don't know how by the grace of god she's like yeah i'm fine like i just meditate on good stuff i'm like lord what (laughs) like that is literally like (laughs) yeah i couldn't do that man but i know there's like there's another one who she just this is a strong lady in christ Mm. prayer warrior just questioning her purpose this is and i'm not saying Mm. like a younger person who's like fresh on the scene like what am i what's my calling it's like this is somebody who's been a prayer warrior who's been serving the church faithfully for years Mm. and now in COVID in isolation she's questioning Mm. herself like what what am i supposed to be doing yeah um and so just adopt somebody yeah and Uh some people it's not even by their own choice they're stuck there because of the laws in their area you know and there's nothing that they can do to leave they're stuck you know Mm -hmm. um and it's like government enforced government mandated and you know depression is going up you know Mm -hmm. um we need to as a church i think just want to really encourage us to to step up you know step into that role Mm mm-hmm I think you had another thing. You know, what? I forgot, <laughs> but I will, I will, I'll throw something else on. Okay. Uh, obviously practice safe distancing and take mm. your vitamins, mm. take your, vi- like nobody's talked about vitamins. Yeah. Like I know that like people are like, does this vitamin cure COVID? Mm. I don't think they've said any vitamin quote unquote cures COVID because vitamins just boost your immune system. Right. But I'm thinking like if this, if this virus is like an army and it attacks your defense, why aren't we building up our defense? Mm. We're just kind of like leaving at risk. Like hopefully my body can fight it. Like, yeah. Don't you want to build some like, forts and some, some moats and some mm. shields so it does less damage yeah um i just don't want to take your vitamins that's side note <laughs> yeah be yeah. safe but take your vitamins yeah i agree i think uh so uh, may, there, there may be a, a few people who are watching this saying like hey you guys aren't wearing masks yet you're talking about all this uh, safety stuff um there's like kind of then this understanding in, in our church in particular i'm not sure how it is with other churches but we've all kind of understood that if we're comfortable being in front of each other with uh without a mask like we're not 
we're not we're not forcing anyone to be here, you know. Um, and so we're kind of just trying to encourage cleanliness as much as possible, uh, safe distan- safe distancing as much as possible. Um, but where that's not possible, we we understand, and uh, you know, we're trying to be as safe as we can. But we're also so this is like all the way down at the bottom. But I'm I'm just gonna say it right now. We're not gonna stop ministry. We're just not. You know, um, I would say that that's paramount to many things, but this is another thing that it's paramount to ministry has to go on. Um, and, and we can do it as safely as we can, but we're not going to be crippled because of fear. Um, and you know, you can take that with a grain of salt. You know, uh, I definitely think that you should be sensitive to what you believe God's called you to do a hundred percent, but we're just for, for us, uh, and Adolfo said this many times, we're just not going to stop, um, ministry for, you know, any any reason that's rooted in fear you know yeah and and on sunday mornings we do wear our masks by the mm-hmm. way sunday mornings is all masks just yeah. just yeah. in case somebody's wondering like are they meeting without masks like sunday mornings mandatory masks cleaning down seats handles all that stuff yeah it's it's like as much as we can yeah you know we're gonna be cleanly we're gonna be um safe you know disinfect stuff but uh we're not gonna stop you know um what so i have how covid strained our relationships and threatened well-being mm. so we've gone through psychological and mental what about emotional emotional yeah um you know what i think i think emotions are heightened because of anxiety mm. emotions are like people are tense i remember when covid first hit i just felt like this this like just tension in the yeah. air almost like yeah people are acting weird because nobody knew what to expect so mm. like people are fighting over the last i literally heard about a guy wrestling with a like like taking a loaf of bread from like mm. an elderly lady at the store Ooh. like just crazy oh, stuff like no. that yes <laughs> um people i mean even driving it just seemed like on the mm. highway they were just driving fast i and, noticed that you I know remember that yeah it was weird everyone was cutting everyone off and they're like honking i was like what is going on right now mm-hmm. yeah i remember that so there was there was this tension in the air um man what, what was the question <laughs> uh, i was just talking about emotional um how how our relationships were threatened and like the our well being was threatened emotionally. Yeah, um, um, yeah. So emotions, I feel like everything is kind of amplified, mm-hmm. especially because we're not having as many meaningful relation like connections. Yeah. So you have if you have one bad conversation in the day and you that's your only conversation you've had, your whole day is ruined. Mm. You know. Um, yeah, I I remember. So we went through a lot as like a as a species, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but like in America, so we've gone through. <clears throat> the pandemic we've gone through an like an election and we went through all the social injustice um mm-hmm. or social justice uh conversations as a country all in the same year this mm-hmm. is why like so many memes are being posted of like 2020 was the worst mm-hmm. um and it it really like was for a lot of people but where i've landed is god has never been working as much in my life and around me um from my perspective as he as he has since this pandemic started, so we we just got through going through suffering, um, the the subject of suffering on Sundays, and I think I've just realized like God loves to work in the middle of suffer, suffering. You know, he he just shows himself faithful, he glorifies himself, and that's been my experience. You know, um, mm-hmm. it's been an emotional roller coaster for sure, um, and I I just feel like I'm, I've I've gone back and forth on different things, but. God's been faithful the whole time. He's been steady. He's been true, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think uh, with that, I think I think I kind of touched on it earlier. Like, this is a time where people isolate from each other and from God. I, I know, like, Christians are just kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm not really reading my Bible as much. Mm. So it's weird. It's like, it's had, like, kind of like a filtering effect. Some Christians I know, like, I've never been in the Word more. Like, I'm on fire yeah. for Christ. Like, I'm in the Word. I'm growing. Um you know, it's not easy, but this has been a great time for growth. But then there's some Christians I'm hearing like, yeah, I haven't really been reading the word. I haven't been mm. seeking the Lord. I haven't been meeting with people. It's like, that's the very thing you need. Like, exactly. it's like if you're underneath the water and you're going low on oxygen, are you going to take your tank off because you're going low? Mm. Are you going to try to use as much, like save as much oxygen as you can, but swim to the surface to get more air, right? Yeah. Like, are you going to swim away from the air? Because you're like, well, I'm just going to run out of oxygen anyway. <laughs> like, why? Yeah. You know, yeah. Now's the time to press in. Now's the time to press into community, to the body, um, and to the Lord. Now is not the time as much as possible. I know you you have to in some circumstances, but to distance yourself, like emotionally or physically, uh, 
from the church uh, again as safely as possible. Um, and like, I'm not trying to push people to, to leave their homes. That's not what I'm trying to do. Um, but I would say, like, again, stay uh, faithful to what God's calling you to do, but don't don't disconnect. Don't mm. disconnect. You need your community, and your community needs you. Yeah. You know. Um, all right. So let's review. Um, a little bit. So we are instructed in the Bible to have community. We've gone through all the verses, um, that we can think of that. Um, and we, we went through that acronym, uh, that spelled the word community in the last episode. Um, if anyone needs community, if anyone find like if you're living in Baltimore city or somewhere close by and you feel like you need community, uh, this is this isn't like a pitch to come to our church, but like you're welcome to come to our church. Uh, we have a midweek Bible study on Thursdays that Tony and Derek lead, um, and then we have a prayer a prayer group on Wednesday mornings. Um, but like, go to church, you know. Um, go to a place where there's fellow believers who are going to push you closer to God, um, and evaluate the relationships in your life right now, um, and just try to determine are they, are they pushing you closer to God, and if not, maybe you should find some ones that do, you know. Um, what else? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is a good time. Um, even I think don't overlook the, the less, the less enjoyable ways of having community. Like mm. we all know zoom is not the same as hanging out in person. Right. <laughs> but <I> do now, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, but at least like maybe schedule some game nights on zoom. There's some free games. Um, we had a lot of fun that one time on, yeah. uh, on zoom. That was great. Yeah. We had like a party. It was like eight of us <laughs> yeah. on zoom. Um, it was slow. It was a little laggy, but, <laughs> um, none of us had the official service, but, uh, all that to say, like, man, maybe schedule some game nights, mm. ske- make some Bible studies, mm. um, use what you can. And, and also like maybe even in those, like plan for what you want to do mm. when this is over yeah. or at least where you want to be in the future. Because, um, I mean, it seems like we're not going to be in this phase of, uh, uh, mm. quarantine forever. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a time where things open up a little bit more, mm. um, pray for that, but also plan on that because, I mean, if you just look at this as a means within itself, it can be very depressing. Mm. Like, oh, well, this is life. And it might be, you know, and if that's the case, plan out how you can make the most out of this. Mm. Uh, but, you know, I'm believing that we're going to come out of this eventually. Yep. Um, it may not look the same. And so what are your plans for after this? Are you just sitting there like twiddling your thumbs waiting for it to pass? Or are you mm. like, are you planning to come out better? Mm. You know, because this is a great time to reevaluate yourself, reevaluate what that's you had. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, my final thought is, um, so don't try to, like, build community. Don't don't try to look at community and say, oh, that doesn't fit into my lifestyle right now. Build it in. Yeah. Like, like make room. Um, you might need to say no to some things that you used to do in the past, you know, in order to, to do this. But I think, like, I think if you've experienced community the right way you'll you'll agree and if you haven't experienced community the right way you gotta you gotta experience it so that you can you can see what i mean but i think you got to build it into your life um and make room for community and for fellowship and for believers to just encourage you and to keep you accountable the whole the whole thing the whole function of the church Mm. press in Mm. yeah well should we pray yeah do you want to pray uh, sure. I'll pray. <laughs> okay. Um, that was a hesitant. Sure. Well, I was going to say, why don't you pray? Okay. But, uh, I'll pray. Yeah. We'll, wanna... we'll both pray. I'll start and then you finish. Okay. Oh Lord. Thank you so much for, uh, this opportunity to just have this video about community. God, I ask for anyone who's watching, um, God, if they're kind of on the fence about, um, whether to rejoin a, a community of believers or whether to just participate online or whatever's going on, God, I just ask that you would use this video, uh, to speak to them. And uh, God, please just don't let it just be our words, but God, I ask that you would send your spirit to um, just shed light on why this is so important. Um, God, I ask that you would use our um, um, our words to supernaturally uh, inspire people to action. And uh, God, if there are there's any any sort of questions out there, God, I ask that you would um, use Tony, myself, Derek, Adolfo, and Josh to uh, to answer those questions, God, and to just step into the role of um, providing spiritual care and uh, and just answers for people, Lord. I ask these things in your name, Amen. God, I I just 
I pray for wisdom, wisdom to know how to navigate through the remainder of the time mm-hmm. of COVID or how to flourish within COVID. I pray for wisdom for those listening, Lord God, that you would filter out the things that, um, uh, you know, that that maybe aren't beneficial to their life or the things that maybe uh, they need to uh, focus in on, Lord God. I pray for wisdom for that. I pray for hope for those who feel hopeless because I know that hopelessness in COVID is very real. So many people feel hopeless. Mm. Um, I pray that you would uh, alleviate the the mental health issues, Lord, that we're facing, Lord, the very real some chronic, some seasonal, some mm. um, brought on because of COVID, some amplified because of COVID, Lord, mm. but very real. I pray that you would heal those with anxiety and depression. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would um, give peace, give hope, give encouragement. Um, and Lord God, I also pray for uh, your presence, Lord Jesus. I, I-, I pray that, uh, God, we- that people who are isolated, who can't, who don't have the ability to operate some of the technology we listed, some of the people who can't leave their house Lord God, just for your supernatural presence and that somehow they would feel your love and love of others in the midst of COVID. And um, I pray for us to remain steadfast in you, Jesus, regardless of circumstance Mm. in the name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, man. Amen. Well guys, uh, there you have it. If you guys have questions, again, please reach out. Um, If you would like us to talk about anything in particular, again, please reach out. We'll be uh, most likely doing uh, more Coffee and Christ combos. Um, And it might might be other people in the future. But um, don't forget to like and subscribe to this page if you haven't already. Um, And hopefully we can make more content for you guys that you enjoy. And uh, if you you feel led, uh, share this video to someone who may need to hear what it has to say. And what else? God bless you. God, yeah. <laughs> God bless you, I guess. <laughs>